Well, a few minutes ago, I spoke to Nassim Taleb, author of the influential Black Swan Theory of Unpredictable Events. Just a few months back, you're on Newsnight. He used this theory to warn of civil unrest on the streets of London, which, of course, came to pass. Well, I start by asking whether world recession would be his next prediction. Uh, I, I don't think that it's, uh, the, the bad news would be a recession. I think the bad news is that uh, not figuring out what got us here and continuing to commit the same mistake, uh, too much debt and too much of what we call the agency problem uh, on the part of the financial system. And let me explain what the agency problem is, the tumor at the center of the system that has not been removed. It's when someone makes money and gets a bonus, and when they lose money, we pay the price, uh, the taxpayers, uh, the future generations in, in this case. So the core of the problem is a that, 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 that uh, asymmetry in payoff, making, uh, you know, socializing uh, losses and, and privatizing the gain, and that generator of that iniquity so is still you, there. So you're basically saying the banks got away with it, are you? What has happened? Since the crisis, these people got us here, and they're reaping the benefits. They're, as an industry, they have not suffered, okay? You have people in the streets, unemployed people. We have the Federal Reserve doing everything to finance these bonuses. This is, I mean, I'm outraged. So what do you think actually needs to happen then to the banks that you think have, have gone un uncharted? What in, in 2000, you know, the first time we bailed out the banks was in 1982, 1983, uh, during the Reagan years. And they said, okay, this should never happen again. But the fact that they bailed out the banks then, in 87 again, and they kept repeating it, gave the banks the feeling that they could hijack society to, to extract that, 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 that. It's a bonus system that's extremely uh, sneaky in the sense that uh, they know if they make a mistake, someone else pays for it, but when they make the money, they get the benefits. Well, what would you make and of... In 2008, in 2008, when they bailed out the banks once, you know, again, uh, they should have set the ground to remove that problem. They did not. The banks today have hijacked the government. It's like inverse uh, uh, of what the French did. They socialized the banks in 1981. Well, here it's like the banks took over the government in the U.S. Well, let, and, me just ask you, let me just ask you something. What would you yes. make of the Bank of England here, the stability chief, arguing that actually banks need to be taking more risk, not less, to get us out of recession? That's what he advocates. I mean, I, uh, it's not whether the banks should be taking more risk or less risk. The banks should be something other than machines to generate themselves bonuses, okay? The banks should be something that, that, that like, more like a utility. We are bailing them out because they're a utility. Otherwise, we'd let them die, like other uh, uh, businesses, like the car industry, like other businesses. We should remove that problem. It has not been addressed. Today, the banks are vastly more centralized than they were before the crisis. They are much more powerful than they were before. They have an incredibly sneaky lobby in Washington. And it looks like every monetary policy we have had in the United States for the past 10 years it was there to accommodate them, and today more than ever. But so, surely so we have you're not, not just saying the problems that got us here. Yeah, but surely you're not just saying that the, the, the world economic woes we're looking at at the moment are all down to a bank bonus, are you? No, but it's because the monetary policies may, th th that we are engaging in in the United States, putting interest rates at zero seems to just do nothing but supply banks with cheap money. That's it. So nothing what should else. change? What should change then in terms of the policy now? We should have, okay, we should, the first thing we should have done is try to remove the cancer by working on lowering indebtedness in society, particularly in the United States. We lost three and a half years, okay? We should have start, started the process very early, transform debt to equity. I mean, it's like a, a country cannot survive on air. Money is air. You print money, it's air. Okay? You need to do something other than just print money and, and create uh, public liability. But this, the aim of this is, is to we get growth back into the economy, surely? The, 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 the word growth to me, okay, by itself is meaningless. You, you can, it's like saying speed. Okay? You need safety before growth. Okay? Pseudo growth. Madoff had growth. A Ponzi scheme generates growth. That's not the growth we want. We want something sustainable, something uh, robust, something effective. And people who talk about growth without robustness, okay, are, are not uh, acting responsibly. It's like growth that's going to make the system collapse in, in two or three years is not the growth we want. We want to clean up the system. We wasted three years.
doing nothing but transferring money into the pockets of bankers. Nassim Taleb, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.